the Thursday, October 20th Ber uh, Town of Berlin Select Board meeting to order. Um, with us tonight on my far left is Joe Staub, Flo Smith, to my right is Carl Parton, I'm Brad Town, and to my far right is Vince Conti. Um, additions or changes to the agenda, Vince? No, sir. Uh, public comment. Hearing none, um, we'll move on to the approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 23 GO8 for payroll FY22 union contract in the amount of $58,784.60. Also pay payroll warrant 23-08 for payroll from September 25th this year to October 8th of this year. Paid on October 12th of this year in the amount of $47,901.16. Also payable warrant 23 GO7 with checks 22349 to 22395 for payables in the amount of $150,740 and one penny. A second. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Uh, motion carries. Um, next is the approval of the August 1st, 2022 minutes. I make the motion to approve the Monday, August 1st, 2022 minutes with just some um, spelling, error, uh, spelling error to a name and just a couple typographical issues, which I can share with Vince after. Okay. Here a second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, minutes for August 15th, 2022. I make a motion to approve the Monday, August 15th, 2022 minutes. And again, just um, not any uh, spelling errors or anything of that nature, but just some uh, issues and they're small and they can be easily corrected. Motion, I mean a second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And the minutes for 8th of September, 2022. I make a motion to approve the Thursday, September 8th, 2022 minutes. Um, as presented with just a minor change to the spacing, basically. In a second? Second. Mr. Chair, you missed the 1 September. 1 September. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, mo uh, motion carries. Uh, 1st of September, 2022. I make a motion to approve the Thursday, September 1st, 2022 minutes as presented with just some spacing issues, which is, again, very minor. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, the minutes from uh, September 19th, 2022. I make a motion to approve the Monday, September 19th, 2022 minutes as presented with just some very minor changes. Your second? Second. Um, any discussion? Uh, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And last, October the 3rd, 2022 minutes. I make a motion to also approve the Monday, October 3rd, 2022 minutes and only changes is some spacing issues. Very, very minor. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And let's see here. Round table, Joe. Oh. All set? I'm set. Uh, Flo? The only round table item I was going to mention is the Lover's Lane Bridge, just in terms of checking on the status. 
where that stands and if you've heard any more bids from the state. Yep. Uh, about two weeks ago, um, I had a conversation with a gentleman from, from the state. Uh, he confirmed that it went through legislation and was on the list of projects to be done, um, but no date was assigned to it yet. Um, he said he thought that for this year, probably the uh, just the study would be done and completed. Uh, they were hoping. Um, he said it could still it could still happen in the next year or two, uh, but potentially out three to five years to get it scheduled and funded um, for the work to be completed. I'm going to talk with him probably once once a quarter now, um, just to follow up for any updates or status changes on that. Excellent. Thank you. That was it. Thank you. Carl? Nope. Nothing. Are you all set? I am all set. Uh, motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. We're adjourned. We'll take a 10 minute recess. I guess I would like to open the public forum right now. Um, call it to order. Uh, the introduction of the new town staff, uh, Rachel uh, Giroux, our new town clerk. <laughs> Ra Rachel, yeah. I'll, I'll have you introduce your assistant. And also with us tonight is uh, Callie Streeter, the uh, uh, assistant treasurer. Yeah, Callie. <laughs> and now to introduce the, uh, the uh, each board and commission. Um, first off, uh, Carl and Weasel can't be here with us, so Tom. We've got Tony Snow. Uh, Tony Snow. I don't know. Well, just take and stand up and uh, give the list of membership and uh, a little bit what you do. Great. Tony Snow, part of the uh, Planning Commission. Um, the other members of the Planning Commission are Carla, as we mentioned, who could make it tonight, Paul McMurray. Um, we had Dave Huber step off the commission, and we gained two new commissioners this year. Amanda Smith, and brand new after last week was his first week officially, uh, Theron Lay Sleeper. And then I will be going over some of the other uh, items that we've been working on as, as a planning commission a little bit later. Okay, thank you. Um, the DRB, Bob? Yeah, um, my name is Robert Warnick. Um, I'm chair of the DRB. Uh, we have um, some of the same members of the DRB. Um, uh, Carl and Weasel is our vice chair. Uh, uh, Polly McMurphy is also on the uh, uh, Development Review Board. Uh, we have uh, John Feverich uh, and Tor Nelson, uh, who's actually an alternate, uh, which is one of the pitches I want to make, is uh, we do need, we have one vacancy, and we would like another alternate. So anybody so inclined, the DRB could use some help uh, with its membership. Uh, I've been on the DRB for 21 years now. Well, you would explain what the DRB is. Development Review Board, um, our, our, our goal is, um, our, our primary purpose is to enforce the regulations of the town of Berlin, the, the regulations meaning the, the land use regulations. Um, I look at it more that our goal is really not to enforce regulations. Our goal is to help developers achieve their goals uh, within the standards that has been set by the town. So um, uh, we look to make it easier for them to get there as opposed to harder. So we have typically not a large agenda, but uh, every once in a while we'll have a major application come in that will take four or five meetings. So anybody has questions about that? I'll be glad to answer them later on. Um, let's see here. Uh, Public Works, Rob Allen. Yes, I'm Rob Allen. I'm the chairman of the Public Works Board. Uh, we're a five-member board, of which we only have four members, Bob, so I also am <laughs> soliciting for another member to our board. Uh, the other members are uh, Ted Long, uh, 
Tor Nelson is a member on our board, and uh, Bob Mungin. Those are so there's four of us on the board right now, uh, and we have a part-time assistant from from uh, Tom Badowski, very part-time really, but he's a guy that does the day-to-day uh, -day stuff for us. He he's on the phone. He's making contact with vendors. He's working with. Uh, consulting engineers, you know, he's, he's the guy in the office every day that gets our work done for us. So I, I'm going to probably call on uh, Tom quite a bit later because I, I see the agenda is fairly heavy with public works projects. So uh, just a little bit about public works in Berlin. Public works is water and sewer in Berlin. Uh, we have a fairly new water system that's uh, up on uh, the Dodge Farm, it has a 425,000 uh, 425, gallon uh, concrete tank. There's four wells up there that fill the tank. Uh, the distribution line comes into, uh, comes down Airport Road into the uh, Industrial Avenue and Granger Road area, and that's where the network begins to service uh, commercial properties and a few residents up on the hill. Um, so the, right now the, the water really just services up on the hill. Our sewer system uh, is a collection system. Uh, it's up on the hill uh, where the water system is, up around you know the hospital and the mall and over by uh, uh, Comfort Inn and that whole area. A few residents. Uh, out Airport Road is also <coughs> where, the, where the sewer system goes and we, we have a few pump stations uh, we worked hard to eliminate pump stations, but there still is a, couple, a, pump, a major pump station there. To, uh, and then all of our sewer on the hill goes down a steep pipe down, down, to, uh, down in the valley to Route 302 area, where we, we have more collection system down there along the Route 3, 302 corridor that collects from commercial properties mostly, but we have some lines that go up a few of the town roads that collect residential areas. And then all of the, the wastewater goes to a, a pump station down uh, near Auto's, is it AutoZone anyway, across from Pizza Hut. From there it's pumped down about a mile. It's pumped to uh, the Montpelier collection system and a manhole down, down towards Montpelier. Um, and from there it goes to Montpelier collection. So uh, Berlin does not have any wastewater treatment facility. It's, it's all collection and transfer, and it all goes down into Montpelier for treatment. Uh, and that's it for me. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Let's see here. Conservation Commission, uh, Tom Willard. I'm Tom Willard. I'm a member of the Conservation Commission. Um, I guess Wendy isn't here. No. Um, Members of the Conservation Commission are Wendy Bowl, she's our chair, Phil Gentilly, uh, Ellen Sulik, and Sister Lauren. Now, forget what you just heard from Rob and Bob. Uh, we're recruiting too. We do fun stuff. You know, those guys are more like work. Uh, some of the stuff that we have done in uh, and, uh, and are presently doing, well, first of all, conservation commissions are created by state statute. We're a statutory party before all Act 250 uh, um, applications. Um, we uh, do more fun stuff, though. Uh, the statute requires <coughs> or gives us authority to inventory all the natural resources in town, uh, and protect those natural resources. Um, and what we've been doing, and what we've done in the past, we've purchased uh, six acres, I think, um, to protect natural resources, five of which are up the ridge line up behind Berlin Pond. It was originally, um, years ago, there was a high-end development, uh, I think it was 18 homes proposed up there kind of energized us, it's quite a while ago. And so we have purchased and put uh, uh, construction easements on the land up there to protect it and 
you haven't been up there, Darling Trail, and then the Pass <coughs> Trail um, goes across the top and down. You really ought to do it. It's just a wonderful <coughs> little resource in town. Um, we work with uh, VAST and uh, the Mountain Bike uh, Association to uh, maintain and properly locate to protect natural resources, <coughs> those trails uh, on the mountain. Um, we produced a really nice report. I think it's on the web page. Really fun report. It is. Uh, we got together a bunch of uh, ecologists and biologists and produced the report on Colin Pond, which is, uh, I, I just find it a fascinating report. Read that if you get a chance after you join. Um, we, we, we started, a, we've been talking a lot about a speakers program where we can get, oh, Roger Hill to talk about climate change and uh, Jim Andrews we had up here wants to talk about amphibians and he took us on a tour and we looked for all kinds of amphibians under logs and that kind of stuff. That was fun. So we're, we're talking about sort of energizing that kind of a speaker's bureau from a not resources uh, focus. <laughs> presently, at the present time, we're working on planting some additional chestnuts up on our, you know, we're working with the Department of Forest Parks and Recreation. Uh, we planted about four or five years ago, and they all died but one. And, that one now is about an eight or ten inch diameter chestnut. So we're talking about planting more up there. Uh, we're making a trip up this fall with forest parks and then perhaps uh, planting, hopefully, in the spring. Um, we've done a lot of invasive uh, species removal, um, buckthorn and those kinds of things that uh, don't serve our natural resources real well. And uh, let's see. So anyway, so I guess that's my pitch. Uh, we had a lot of fun. At one time, the Wood Conservation Commission was designated the State of Vermont Conservation Commission of the Year back when we were doing a lot of our land work. So that was kind of uh, kind of uh, heartening. So so uh, sign up and have the select board appoint you. How many acres did you say you purchased and conserved? Uh, it's about 800. I don't know the exact number, but, uh, and also the Dog River, by the way, has a absolutely gorgeous uh, uh, piece of land. It's where the, if anybody knows where the jacuzzi is, kind of a historic <laughs> swimming hole. And then there's this beautiful gorge that goes down through there, and there's some hemlocks. It's got to be this big right on the very edge of the cliff. It's just, just a gorgeous place, a little hard to get to. Uh, but, um, so that's the Dog River Natural Area too. How's the uh, Berlin Pond conservation effort going at the south end? The land deal at the yeah. south end? Um, <sighs> that, uh, the land is, um, there's a family, the Crandall family, the heirs all have the right of first refusal. Mm -hmm. So we have a grant for $120,000 to help purchase that. It's <coughs> land at the south end of the pond, and it's about uh, a half a mile or more of uh, riparian land on that beautiful wetland there. Um, and it was on the market, uh, and we stepped in and thought that it ought to be preserved to protect the wetland and the pond. And uh, the grant that we had, one of the grants, the $120,000 grant, it's through the Vermont Housing Conservation Board, and they need to subordinate the Crandall family right of first refusal to the easements that the Vermont Land Trust is going to hold. And uh, so right now the legal work's being done to identify which members of the family have that right and then to get them to give up their right of first refusal. No, to give up, to subordinate their rights uh, to the easement that we want to put on the land to protect it. So that's... Do we have enough money to buy it? We have enough money. We've raised uh, $15,000 from the town and 
80,000 from other fundraising efforts, and the 120,000 from BHCB is the big one. So we can't purchase it without that. Yeah. And uh, any other questions? Thank you, Tom. Um, the Recreation Committee, Tim Shea. Hi, I'm not Tim Shea. <laughs> uh, Tim is our Tim Shea is our our chairman. Uh, our secretary is Hannah Connor. I'm Jeff Farrell, uh, along with other members, uh, Krista Zabrinsky and Mike Noyes. Uh, but Tom said he did fun stuff, and he does. But we're the Recreation Commission. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. Are we hiring anybody? Do we have a space? Do you know anybody? I don't know. I, I don't think we have, I think we're, we're we're full up right now, but hey, we're willing to we're willing to talk if you want to come and hang out with us because we've got other stuff that needs to be done. Um, some of those things that we do, uh, <coughs> we work with the school to um, to enhance, develop better our youth recreation programs. Um, it, it's a it's a it's a difficult environment and we work so we work with them as best as we can. Um, the uh, we also we also are working on developing some adult um, activities, uh, adult recreation activities, for instance broom ball a broom ball league at the ice rink. Uh, we manage the ice rink. Uh, if anybody wants to come out and help with managing the ice rink, we can always use help man managing the ice rink. Uh, we are dusting the snow off in the wintertime or helping us spray some water. You may want to tell people that may not know where the ice rink is at. Oh, the ice rink. If you don't know where the ice rink is, uh, it is at the end of Shed Road, right next to the town office and the police station. Uh, it's, uh, it's got a full-ish size hockey rink. A little small, and I, a little bit smaller, but pretty pretty good size ho outdoor hockey rink with boards. Um, I should mention it is the Tom Willard Memorial. We're not Memorial. Tom Tom Willard. <laughs> 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 Tom Willard currently existing. <laughs> Tom's our guy who has been has been running it like a champ for decades. Um, yeah, so um, so we can't have Tom being the only guy who's out working on the ice rink. So the rest of the Recreation Commission will be out there with Tom, and we, like I said, we can always use more help. There's, there's lights? There are lights. It is a lighted rink. It is open, uh, we like to, yeah, midnight-ish. If we can shut the lights off, that'd be great. The neighbors like the lights to go out <laughs> earlier. But um, I always say that because the light shines in my window. Um, but the. Uh, but I'm also probably the number one customer for this skating rink, so um, so the uh, so so I don't mind the light so much. Um, beyond that, um, we collaborate with the Conservation Commission uh, to make sure that we are that the users of the trails and the public lands are being responsible and respectful of our public lands, and that we are um, and that we're maintaining good usage of those public lands and recreational, acti recreational activities. We collaborate with the Montpelier Area Mountain Bike Association. Um, so far, the Conservation Commission has mostly done the vast interactions, but we're there if they need any assistance with those kind of things. Um, we got a new scoreboard up at the Berlin Elementary School. Come on and check it out. It is uh, mainly a baseball scoreboard, but it's set up so that we can use it for soccer too. Uh, or any other thing that might be happening over there. Um, let's see, new scoreboard, youth programs, adult yeah. programs, um, working with the Conservation Commission. Uh, I will be working with the Planning Commission to help us figure out some things that we can do with our expansions of, expansions of trails and um, multi-use paths around the community how we can best use those and make sure the community is getting what they want out of, out of those things. Um, and uh, we are here to represent you as a community uh, in the field of recreation for 
all of our community members, whether they are this big or this big, uh, we want everybody to be able to have some enjoyment of our space here in the town of Berlin. Emergency management chief, or Bruce. Good evening, I'm Bruce Richardson, and um, I am the emergency management coordinator for the town of Berlin. Uh, the emergency management um, committee or, or team uh, of Berlin is not like a lot of these other uh, boards and committees. We're just a group of volunteers who uh, are there to help support the uh, first responders of the town in the event uh, there's a very large uh, incident or disaster or uh, that kind of thing you know think hurricane irene think superstorm sandy those are the kinds of things that we would normally be involved with but also things like um, flooding that can happen with uh, bad thunderstorms or uh, ice jams on like the stevens branch or the winooski um, things where we can rapidly spiral out of control and uh, the incident commanders excuse me uh, could need some help um, now, the emergency management director uh, is a state-mandated position that's in state statute. That is uh, Chief Point Brown, our uh, current EMD. He can have uh, support staff, including EMC, who helps just run the normal uh, administrative side of things. And then we have a fairly small but good staff. Um, Besides the chief, for myself, we have a Vals here. Been on the team for uh, for a while anyway. Uh, Tor Nelson, a name you've heard quite a bit. He was uh, our first uh, EMD for the town uh, way back in uh, 2007. Um, we also have a number of members who may or may not be uh, as active with the uh, the team as they had been in the past, but are still available when we had a potential activation for a uh, need for a shelter. We had several people show up, come in, um, and some other uh, former members uh, showed up to help us if we had to open up a shelter. Um, so that, uh, that helps us out a lot. And we have liaisons with uh, other organizations that do uh, disaster related stuff like the American Red Cross, the uh, Central Vermont Disaster Animal Response Team, uh, and also uh, we have a liaison from the Central Vermont Medical Center because they have their own whole uh, emergency management uh, set up there at the hospital and we've done some drills with them and uh, well, it's good to know how they have plans a lot of uh, like decontamination <coughs> um, for uh, bad, bad kind of things that they practice for. Um, that's basically it. Um, I guess I can't compete with the recreation um, <laughs> conservation departments for, for recruiting, but we're always looking for people. Uh, it's not a huge investment of time. We meet once a month, and uh, there's a little bit of training involved, but a lot of it can be done online. So. Uh, again, uh, we're there to help and, oh, and also send out Vermont Alert messages. I know how many of you have heard of, heard of Vermont Alert, signed up for it. But we, the team, can send out messages to the whole town in the event of an emergency or uh, need to get out information in a quick manner. So, highly endorse Vermont Alert, and if you're not signed up for it, I suggest you, you do because it is a way we get information to you very quickly by whatever method you prefer to get it by. I would only like to add that uh, I haven't been on the team for very long, so I would really rely on the experience of the team members for a long time. Um, I do have frequent contact with the state on that end of emergency management, and I've heard back that the emergency management plan that the team has to do regularly was one of the best they had seen. So that speaks highly of their work and their dedication and their professionalism to that particular subject. Um, it's probably not widely known, but Berlin houses a lot of critical infrastructure. So in addition to any random act of nature that can happen anywhere, anytime, 
we have the train station, we have the power station down the road, which would be a nightmare if something happened down there. Um, we have the hospital, we have assisted living homes. So we had an incident not that long ago where there was a propane leak at the nursing home. And we had to figure out where are we gonna put all these people because bad weather is coming that way. So um, things do happen and that really shows the need for this team and for people to actively participate in that team. That's my question. Um, I'd like to open the, fl uh, the floor to, uh, to for discussion on the uh, on town vision. Um, the planning commission was going to speak to this. I'll speak to it. Here's it. Um, so Tony Snow again from the planning commission. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the things that we've been working on uh, towards the, the town vision and some of the projects we've been working on as a planning commission, and, and we're really looking forward to. Uh, public participation in. Um, uh, most of you probably know about the new town center. Uh, we officially received town center designation. I believe we're only the third uh, town center designation uh, in the history of uh, the state's program. Uh, and also, very recently, we just approved a new name for the town center. Uh, so if you're, if you're not aware yet, the town center is going to be called the Berlin Common. Uh, with the street officially named as well, entering into the town center called Gateway Avenue, or Gateway Avenue. Um, we've also been working uh, closely with the school um, uh, for a land transfer. Uh, we had a vote in March uh, that we were able to put together a media campaign uh, with the school and with uh, residents and uh, as well as members of the board, the planning commission, um, to promote the uh, town center as well as the land transfer. The vote was approved by all five towns in the school district. Um, and, and just recently, uh, Tom informed me that they were able to work with the school board to get language approved to officially have that transfer take place very soon here. So the property that is um, near the, the current Berlin Mall uh, just behind the school uh, that we were looking to transfer, I think it's, it's 3.8 acres, will officially come into our possession. And that was a huge, uh, 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 that was a huge thing for us to happen because it's going to allow us to make the new uh, road into the town center, into Berlin Common, a lot more safe for the residents that are going to be housed there, as well as for traffic that's, that we expect to be coming through that area. Um, We've also been working with the community on a community rec path. You've heard this mentioned before. And that's one of the great things about, I'm noticing about our town is a lot of overlap between the different committees and commissions that we have. Um, so we have the, the rec path currently in discussion. Um, and, and there are a couple of phases currently in place for a possible future rec path that'll be wrapping around, um, hopefully the entirety of the new town center. Uh, We've also recently been approved for our neighborhood development area. And Tom, can you explain a little bit more about what the neighborhood development area does for us? It includes the new town, <clears throat> it includes the new town center and a quarter mile radius around it. And what it uh, does, it uh, affords developers, uh, particularly those developing a housing or uh, credits from the state of Vermont uh, to help defer some of the, the costs. It, it alleviates some Act 250 requirements, um, and uh, it also uh, uh, allows the uh, development of a, of a tax incremental financing district. So it's a, it's a way to, to uh, uh, pay for future infrastructure in, in, these, in these places. And I just want to say, I, so I, um, came onto the commission after learning a lot about the Newtown Center. It's something that, something that I'm personally very excited about. Uh, as a former uh, uh, community planner and transportation planner, um, it was something I'm really looking forward to, um, uh, helping to influence the change that's going to be occurring in our community. Um, in the future, if, if all is able to work out with the Newtown Center, we're going to be able to provide quite a bit of new housing uh, invite new residents into our community. We're going to be able to bolster the, the funding for the local uh, uh, school district, um, as well as um, have a lot more, uh, uh, hopefully, kids running through our community as well. So something I'm really, really excited about, is, as well as adding those new 
recreation pieces as well. Um, and in thinking about this, uh, one more piece that I wanted to touch on was our community was uh, recently just approved by the Vermont Council on Rural Development uh, to be included in their community visit program. Uh, and this is something that I'm really excited about. Uh, we, they are going to be um, doing all the legwork and uh, 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 providing a community organizing effort for us to have, uh, we're going to, as a commission, help uh, fund some uh, uh, community meals. And it's going to be an opportunity for people to come together. I, I'm under the impression it'll take place in different areas around Berlin to, to include as many residents as possible. And uh, the goal is to have a lot more residents participating in what future projects might look like in the town of Berlin, as well as uh, a priority projects as well for us to, to take on moving forward. And I think this happening in conjunction with the, the new town center is going to be huge for building and continuing to build identity for the town of Berlin. Thank you. Any, any questions for him or? Sure. I, I was just wondering, is so this, uh, the housing stuff, is, is this including like a, or uh, affordable housing? I mean, is that built into, you know, the plan that you're looking for? I'm under the impression the newest development that's going to occur involves affordable housing. Is that correct, Bob? That's, right? that's correct, yeah. So, yeah. so uh, that, there will be affordable housing as a part of it, as well as um, new uh, uh, commercial space, uh, giant spaces. Uh, uh, and, uh, in the model that I envision that we currently have, there's a town green as well, a place for community events. So, so the goal is to have um, yeah. affordable housing, a mixed uh, 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 affordability of housing. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes, Tom. I, I just have one quick comment, that is, I don't want this, well, first of all, I want to thank the select board for hosting this. It's pretty nice. Um, but I don't want the planning commission to forget the historic Four Corners area. I support, I support the new town center. Um, I understand we need a municipal presence over there. Um, but um, I think maybe in terms of a town vision, we can spend a little more time thinking about protecting what we already have, which is uh, the historic, uh, I know the historic preservation has gone around a lot of the homes from Louis Plouffe's Queen Anne's porch. Uh, there are a lot of really nice things, like we've got the church, we've got, and it's right next to some pretty useful commercial properties as well. So I haven't seen a lot of really, a lot of work to make sure that we protect this part of town. I think it, for everything from sidewalks to trails, I know, by the culverts, I hold my breath every time I see somebody with a baby carriage going across there with no shoulders and the cars are going, you know. It really needs some sidewalks. It really needs, I, so I guess my pitch is to spend a little more time, spend <coughs> time in the town center, but don't forget what we already have in the uh, Four Corners historic area. Yeah, Tom. So, uh, Tom, well, I, I can appreciate that. Uh, the Planning Commission in 2018 got two sections of town, uh, got a village center <coughs> designation. One of them is the Four Corners, uh, Berlin Corners area. And so that, that opens up the opportunity for funding uh, to four sidewalks, for, for uh, facade improvements. There's tax credits uh, available for that. The other one is down in the village of Riverton. Part of it is the, is the just the lack of, of people to do the work, right? You know, so if, if if we can get the neighborhood together, I think that's what's needed to to start some of these other things. So I, I would encourage you to do that. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Is that, I think that designation. Um, you know, if you if you think of a town vision, you could picture all of these historic homes as doctor's offices or, or attorney's offices or something else. And I'm not sure, I appreciate the designation, but I'm not sure that designation goes quite far enough, but just a thought. I, I would add in addition to that, um, just because I, I, it's always a hard conversation 
uh, I had as, a, as someone who works in um, a local school and, and, and having seen a lot of the, the planning and history that's going into this and the work that we've done with the mall, um, since it's not our property and it's working with the mall. Um, I, in addition, it's, I think one of the really cool things about the town center is the area that we are transforming is a parking lot. And we're turning it into a place. And so it's going to be amazing. But I'm really excited to hear more about that because that, that I think is definitely should be a future part of, of, of what we're doing. I think that should, should and could and, and, and uh, will be coming up with the, uh, the neighborhood uh, visit program. It's a really good opportunity for that discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Any more on this discussion? Um, uh, the fire department merger, um, Joe. Good evening, my name is Joe Staub. I've uh, been on the fire department since 2009. Um, been the corporate president for the last six years and your current chief. <coughs> I have my deputy chief, Matt Romeo in the back and a firefighter, Rich uh, Janet Richardson. We currently have 27 responders, um, all volunteers, and they all you know, work in the community or outside the community, and we talk about daytime coverage. That's kind of a tough one. We are, um, I guess, fortunate that we have a couple people who are either semi-retired or they have the ability to leave their work. I don't necessarily know if the fire department merger is really the right topic here, but what we're looking for is we need to change, we need to grow and pick up, pick up our pace to catch up with all the development we're just talking about. Um, you know, I don't care if it's the utilities, the planning, um, you talk about fun, <laughs> nothing's more fun than the fire department. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I get an invitation just before dinner to go out on the interstate at 10 below, <laughs> okay, <laughs> to dance around all the traffic out there, pick up dead, dead deer parts to allow the rest of the traffic to safely go through. But anyway, <laughs> so that's a true story. <laughs> um, two dead deer, three down cars, and the track in the interstate down to a one lane. Anyway, um, we're in a kind of an interesting position right now where we have a number of Norwich students. So we, we have about six or eight people coming from Norwich, and they are wired for this. Um, we also have a number of them in classes taking uh, their Fire One certification. 230 some odd hours, volunteer hours, mind you. The same certification as your paid department in Montpelier or Barry. Okay, just to let you know. They're getting paid to do it. EMS. We have, we have seven that are either EMS or above. And we have another 13 that are just a lower level cert. You know, this, this is this is new for the town of Berlin, but still, we're volunteers. That's, it's really tough, and yeah, I think the commission, anybody who, who's dealing with volunteers can really you know, understand that. What is the town looking for? What do they need? I can tell you in the last six months, we've had three structure fires in West Berlin. Your volunteer fire department, we can have a truck on the road somewhere around 13 to 15 minutes on the road. We're not there yet. Are we good with that? Should we be good with that? All the development happening here up on the hill, I should say, is, you know, all that commercial. They need, they, you know, need us more often than the residents. They do. In fact, all those car accidents up on the interstate, people who are not even town residents, use us more than the commercial. You know, we are going out on, at the end of September, we have around 208 calls, fire calls. That's car accidents, alarm activations, structure fires. 
mutual aid funds. 444 fast water calls. So that's your EMS, your medical medical calls. These are your volunteers. I think I uh, came up short when I didn't bring my applications. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I saw all the all the written papers. I said, oh man, I missed the opportunity. Okay, so what I'm looking at is probably no one wants to put fire gear on, but there's a lot of administrative work that happens here. So if we were talking about merging with the town, what would that look like? What that would mean to me is I would have less work administratively and able to put more focus on trainings and being, you know, equipping the, the young people coming in. That's what it would mean to me. But again, it all goes back to the residents. You know, what are you, what are you, what are you going to be happy with? What will you, you know, are you good with 15 minutes before you hear those trucks coming down the road? 15 minutes of your house on fire, you're calling your insurance company. Okay. So I'm not really sure. Matt, would you have something you want to share? Yeah, so um, I thought it might help. I'll, I'll help you out. I'll come over here with Joe. Sorry. Get out of here. So um, my name is Matt Theroni. I, I'm the Joe's number two dance partner. Um, for those that don't know kind of what we do, we have two fire stations in the town of Burlap. We have one up there at, across Mapleby's, one down here on Route 12 in Riverton. There was a nasty rumor a couple years ago that that fire station down here in Riverton, which is the old heart of the residential section of Berlin, was closed. That's not true in case anybody thinks that. Uh, the first truck that went out the door or that got to the scene on Chandler Road last week came out of that firehouse. Um, I was on the Berlin Fire Department back in the 90s when I was a cadet at Norwich and uh, joined back up uh, no. I'm not sure. COVID. Okay. I blame all my dates because they're all fuzzy because of COVID. But it takes a lot to do what we do. Um, we, we currently have uh, two fire engines, a rescue truck that also works as an engine, a ladder truck, um, a utility vehicle. All those have to be checked out uh, routinely. We have, I don't even know how many thousands of dollars worth of air packs that mean the difference in life and death for our firefighters and for our, our town residents. Back when I got into the fire service in the 90s, um, we were just getting into this new era of construction where the fires in residences, residential structures, went from doubling every 10 to 15 minutes to doubling every two to three minutes because of the way houses are built, because of the way that um, the contents of the residences are made what we're you know building things out of. It's the old phrase, they don't build them like they used to. The other thing we are um, constrained with in the town of Berlin is we have 2,900 nighttime residents. And a daytime population of 12,000, 12 to 15,000. And so we really have a different fundamental problem than an East Montpelier or a Berrytown or a Williamstown or a North we don't have a big residential community to draw from. Now, I'll tell you, he alluded to it earlier, I got something that will beat every one of these boards and commissions. I'll let you drive a fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you can drive down into Montpelier at three o'clock in the morning and run the lights and sirens. Like the <laughs> um, we are at a turning point though. Honestly, we've been at a turning point. It's hard to recruit and retrain, retain volunteers. It's hard to recruit and retain full-time public safety personnel. And it's not limited to Berlin. It's not limited to the fire service. It's not limited to the EMS service. It's not limited to law enforcement. We're, re we're statewide, uh, uh, truthfully, New England-wide in trouble uh, with public safety. And we've got to figure this, figure this game out because uh, the forecast is not real rosy. Now, I don't mean to be Debbie Downer, but still let you drive a fire truck. And went, Woo -woo. But we've got to figure out where we're going to go from here because it is, it's not, it's not a bad thing that it takes us 10 to 15 minutes to get a truck out, out, out the door. It just is. 
it, it's, you know, we probably need to do better. But we can't do better in a volunteer model, um, especially with the way our, um, our area is, is working. There's also the bigger, kind of the bigger picture. We're also a, de a decon unit for the state hazmat team. So we get called, we've been to Northfield, we went to Williamstown, we've Marshfield. been to Marshfield, been to Middlesex, and that's just in just the past couple of years. So we have folks that are trained um, and, and can take that to those hazardous materials incidences. We're also seeing, and this goes right into the Conservation and Recreation Committee land, we're going to see Washington County double the number of recreational trail mileage in the next before the snow melts. There are going to be some uh, areas of uh, mountain biking trails, not in the town of Berlin, but in the greater Washington County area that are just going to absolutely blow the lid off of the number of available trails. Challenges when you go up on Irish Hill and you um, hit that rock the wrong way, come off your bike and break your shoulder, we're the ones that come and get you. So we're working now uh, as part of a regional effort with the District 6 EMS board to coordinate efforts. Because it's not just Berlin, it's not just Middlesex and Montpelier and Waterbury. It's, this is now becoming a regional impact, if you will. Uh, to public safety. Uh, we just did a backcountry in uh, Northfield Saturday night. It was a two and a half hour effort. And that was easy. So these are labor intensive, manpower and equipment intensive events uh, that, we, uh, that, we have to, uh, that we have to deal with. So um, I know we've been talking about and this, what's on the thing here is you know, the talk about the merger with the town. Um, we're not unique in that we're not a town department. It, it's pretty common around here, to be honest with you. It's a little weird, but uh, it's pretty common. Um, we also are kind of like, well, you know, that's taking a Tuesday night and usually another night with a board meeting that's pulling out of our ability. Look, it's boring coming to the meetings, y'all. So when I got this 19, 20 year old that wants to go out and drag hoses around and spray water, that's what we need to be doing, not paying the bills in the usual expedient manner. So that's that's kind of where at least we've we've talked about internally where we're going. We also have you know the capital needs just like every other town department. We just bought a ladder truck. Let me back up. <clears throat> ISO Insurance to Services Organization. Um, our ISO rating, it's a rating the fire department undergoes about every 10 years. It directly affects every one of your wallets. Because our ISO rating governs what you pay for homeowners insurance. It governs what the mall pays for commercial property and casualty insurance. Which in turn affects the rent for the stores of the mall, which in turn affects what you pay for groceries at Walmart. So it all comes, some of that all comes back to that ISO rating. Uh, we were forecast to lose a grade in ISO this year. We weren't alone, Montpelier was forecast to lose one too. So we're working through those issues to see if we can not lose that grade. We, they give us a warning and tell us what we need to do. And honestly, on our end, it's mostly we need to take what we need to. But, in order to meet ISO requirements, we have to have in-date trucks that are tall enough, that reach far enough, that pump enough water, that do all these other things. So we took the step this year as a department, we bought a, a ladder truck that if we'd written the specs for to buy brand new would have been a million and a half. And just to put that in uh, terms of our annual budget, that's 75,000, isn't that the right number? $75,000 a year into the capital fund to buy that. We were able to find one that was in, in pretty incredible condition for $180,000. So that's the efforts that we go through to try to be frugal, but at the same time to have the equipment uh, on hand that meets ISO regulations and that uh, will serve the town. So, I, you know, I think that 
you know, ask the questions. I, you know, I think we end up probably dicing through a merger discussion in the next year, if nothing else, to relieve us of the burden of trying to run a business um, in addition to running the fire department. Uh, we have to post 30 hours a year uh, in continuing education that includes a hazardous materials module and includes some other minor requirements, but getting those, you know, two hours a month with maybe a couple extra days is a, is a tough reach. So who picks up that work that, that you don't do as a, as for logistics and administration when it goes to the town? I would expect it would be the town uh, administration, but you remember that, you know, where we have to sit and look and, and, and work our budget and decide to pay the bills and that, that comes here. Yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna say about six years ago, we outsourced our accounting. Yeah. We, we used to do it in, in, in house, um, but now we are over a quarter million dollar budget. And I can't you know, afford to have my volunteers be that treasure mm -hmm. and, and, and miss miss something, you know, the decimal went the wrong way, right? So we, we, we sent it out and we went, um, went with a firm who took care of the, the accounting. We were paying $900 a month. We put it out as an RSP <coughs> and now we're paying $1,200 a month. So this is, you know, something that could happen if we were to merge, we have, you know, an accountant, we have an assistant accountant, you know, that if nothing else is gonna supplement somebody's income on the town side. It's kind of like a bonus for the town. We're still paying it, mm -hmm. but I'm paying it to somebody else, not a, not a town employee. So I see that as being, you know, a, a win there. Um, and like you said, you know, it's the administrative end. And, and the money is the big is the big part. I have uh, I do have a volunteer, the treasurer, with an assistant treasurer in house who um, collects the bills and you know turns around and puts the right line item and sends it off to the accountant. The accountant does everything and pays the bills. Okay, um, there's more to it than that. There's taxes and such, and you know there is a stipend. You know that they turn around and, and we do get a stipend. As once a year, um, so there are taxes as well that they take care of, not just a, yeah, that's all. Yeah, uh, so I'm just curious, it's, it's not like we're dealing with the city of New York's population for the town government. I mean, they're sitting here, right? Like Vincent, yeah. Tom, and the three folks back here, are they the folks who pick up the work for the, for the fire department then? And can you guys handle that? Can you do that? They're doing it now. Is that, are they? I think that's what they're doing okay. now. That's what uh, Joe was saying. Um, no, they're, they're not doing that. No, they're not. No. I, I, pay, I pay batch elders yeah. in Barry Town to do our account. Or I should say, yeah, I work with batch elders. We all pay batch elders $1,200 a month. Mm -hmm. you know, I guess the plan would be we sure give it. Try and let the let the staff do it, right? <coughs> you know, we've talked about it. And I think this is before Vince even came on board. Um, toyed around with that, and it wasn't uh, wasn't necessarily the right time. We only had, you know, Diane was the only accountant or the treasurer, um, and she had more than enough. And that's why we got an assistant treasurer. Um, is, is this the right time? I, I don't know. I'm just saying. I think it's worth a conversation. Do these new buildings um, have impact fees that are they're charged to help fund some of the stuff like that? Like, um, Interestingly the enough. The that are going on in big, you know, multi-unit apartment buildings. And so we're, they, we're missing they, the boat. I think the town is missing the boat on that. But how do we get on the boat for that? Uh, I think what it adds is grand list, right? So that's how these guys get funded, a good bit of it, from the grand list. So I think you know, if, if you have so much impact fees, 
you have no development. So it's a it's a it's a fine line, right? I don't know. I've, I've lived in central Vermont long enough. I remember the, the farms that were up here and the few roads that there were when I was going to my grandmother's house. Um, this right here is the hub of central Vermont. I don't care what you put out there. They will build here. And I think they're, they're getting, I think they're getting a pretty, pretty decent ride. requirements as we grow um, I'll speak to that one uh, as you I don't know if everyone was aware but we have had to rent a uh, trailer office trailer for the, the uh, for the uh, listers or the assessors I should say um, the between the police department and the town uh, administrative departments uh, Unfortunately, the town clerks, uh, the town offices are getting a little tight. Um, I'm not saying we need to build anything today, tomorrow, or the next day, but I'm just trying to put it out there so that people or you have a chance to think about this. Um, the, we do have some land that, was, uh, that we got from the school over on the entrance to the mall. Uh, that is. The, we, when we took that on, we were talking about having that as the uh, as the uh, town presence in the mall, in the new uh, town center. Uh, other than that, any questions? I don't know. It was briefly a, a talk I remember about the mall offering up property in the building for the town offices. Well, the trouble there is is that. Uh, um, it would it would still cost us rent services. Um, the other problem is accessibility uh, disruptions and on that type of thing. Um, we were talking some about putting me putting the listers over there, but the cost per per square foot it didn't make sense. So we. I thought originally they offered it for free, but I'm going. Well, they may have offered the square footage for free, but everything else was going to cost. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Um, so would that mean that uh, what the PD would have the whole building would stay there? Well, <coughs> what would happen there? Again, that's one of the things we need to discuss. If the police department takes over the, the present town offices and we build new <coughs> for the administrative part and I mean, we're, I was just, a little while ago I was talking to Vince about this, and that's why he put it on the agenda. 
and I just wanted to get it out there so that people could start thinking about it. Or for recreation expansion over there. What's that? Sounds like a great opportunity for recreation <laughs> expansion over there. <laughs> that, that, that may be coming up. Um, and then you could probably build new off the fire department and give it a public safety building and the presence over there of PD. Great location. Just a thought. <laughs> and then the rec department has their building. <laughs> Okay, um, let's see here. Uh, highway, the highway garage needs, I'll put some, can you speak to that, Vince? Um, sure. Uh, if any of you have been by the town office and seen the existing highway garage, you'll see that it's in, uh, it's pretty old and in a pretty rough state. Again, this is on here just for information um, to get people talking and thinking about it. Um, at some point in the very near future, we're going to need to probably invest a little bit of money in that garage um, just to <laughs> not, uh, not melt the snow in the parking lot in the winter with all the heat coming out of it. It's, uh, it's in really rough, rough shape. Um, so it's, again, it, that's why it's on the list, just similar to the down office building. We, we're going to have to have some, some discussions about that in the very near future. On, uh, on what we want to do there, whether it's remodel it, take it down, and put up a new one. Um, there's all kinds of options out there, obviously, but it's, it's something that's coming up soon. In the last 10 years, we have had um, uh, Efficiency Vermont in there, and they did do a lot of uh, insulation and, and upgrades to the, to the windows and closing some windows off. And, just putting insulation over them, um, but uh, again, we're still as as fuel prices go up, energy prices go up. Uh, we're seeing that budget there start to increase again. And I don't know how much more you can do to that building to to make it energy efficient. One of the problems, of course, with a garage like that is that when they open the doors to bring the trucks in or take the trucks out, you lose all your heat. And, whether we could take and <coughs> put up a new building that had some way to trap it, I don't know. But uh, it's just like Ben says, just a lot of these items are for uh, for people to think about and get in, get into the uh, idea that uh, some of this is is um, uh, just I mean the buildings are getting old and antiquated. That's the only way I can describe it. Uh, Anything else on the highway garage needs? Um, Police Department growth, Chief. Good evening, my name is James Tonker, I'm um, the Chief of Police. I've been on the job now for about two years, a little more than two years. Um, I've been in law enforcement for about 20 years. Um, when I came on board, the department was in fairly rough shape. There was a history of a lot of turnover there. Um, we had five out of the eight officers that were allotted. Two of them were level two certifications. And for those of you who don't, aren't familiar with the certification process, we have three levels of certification. One, basically, you're a road cone on the interstate <laughs> monitoring traffic. Level two, you have um, quite a bit more responsibility, but there's still some limitations on what types of arrests you can make and what type of authority you have. And then there's level three. Um, two of the officers out of that five were level two. So that was a bit concerning to me as there were a lot of restrictions on what they could do. Um, now it's, I don't know um, if you've been monitoring the news, but in addition to everyone facing kind of labor shortages, law enforcement has faced unprecedented um, departure from the field and an inability to get people interested in getting on the job. So it's been a grind over the last two years, but we are currently, on paper at least, full staff. We have an officer who's out with an injury, and someone's at the academy. We're also, all the officers are at level three, which is good for us, um, because the state is really looking at those certifications and making sure officers um, are as highly trained as possible. Um, in addition to facing kind of a, a staffing crisis, we 
have faced a lot of reform over the last two or three years. Um, a lot of that's kind of internal reform on how we deal with things, um, the supervision of officers and how they're trained and how we deal with complaints and transparency. That requires a lot of level, a higher level of training, but also internally, how do we track those things? Um, so we've had to make improvements to our software, and to our training process, and tracking that training. Um, and I'd like to say we're in really good shape, but it's we're kind of having to grow more than we've traditionally grown over the last few years. I think we're in stasis for a long time. Um, the town's changing. There's a lot of new stressors on us between the hilltop and the Good Samaritan on the Barry Montpelier Road, uh, which has increased our call volume significantly. Uh, we're looking at growth with this town square. Um, that's going to put a significant increase on our call volume as well, and we need to look forward to the future. The town has, the select board has granted me to hire an additional officer, and we were able to do that. There's no one else here in Vermont that is fully staffed, so this is like kind of ground-shaking uh, ability for us to do that. And I think it speaks to the professionalism of our officers. Um, the town itself, it's really well known that the town is a good place to work. Um, my next agenda would be to find a better facility and how we can do that, because we're starting to outgrow our facilities. It's kind of a pet peeve of mine. They're really in poor shape. If any of you ever want to come over and take a tour, I, be more than happy to walk you through the place and introduce you to the officers. Uh, but we're in dire need of a new facility for sure. Um, both to kind of keep up with the growth, uh, but also to keep up with some of the demands that the state is putting on us. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. With the new state police barracks in town, can they help you out? They, they, they some are absolutely no help. In fact, and I'm not trying to be disparaging at all, they're also in a staffing crisis. Um, that's created more workforce because they're designated, as opposed to when they were in Middlesex, that was always known as the Middlesex Barracks. So there was a clear differentiation between the two of us. Now they're known as the Berlin Barracks, so there's constant confusion. People are showing up to our office, asking questions about a state police case that's being worked on. Paperwork's being sent to us, bills are being sent to us that are meant to be going down the road to the state police barracks. It's not staffed uh, regularly. The officers are out on the road, so when people go over there and they don't get an answer, they come to us. So it, it's been no help whatsoever. <laughs> and that because they're so short staffed, they're very often they're unable to assist us if we have something going on. Chief, you mentioned how the two years the department has grown and, and you gave accolades to your, your officers and stuff. I can't believe it's been already two years that you were here, but you deserve much of the credit that, that has improved this department. And I hope everybody understands <laughs> where this department was. And, and I, 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 again, I was on the team that hired you. Thank you for coming to the town. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Any other questions? We, we were speaking in theoretics earlier of a new town office moving. Mm -hmm. and the idea was thrown out of the police department using the entirety of the building. Is that something you could see as a possibility in the future? Or is that something that's like that building was going to, the location or the building or whatever isn't going to suit the needs of the future of the police department? The location is fine. Uh, <coughs> we certainly use the space that that would allow. And my concern would be the condition of the building because it's an older building. There's a lot of need of improvements there. Would you find, again, in speaking in theory, if, say, town offices moved to the new town center and a police department was located there, would that make sense or would that be more complicated or would that be better? Would it be worse where being we are now or in this new location? In the new location. Um, I would prefer that we were attached or adjacent to the fire department and like a public safety building. Um, that would make the most sense. Um, it really works down in Bears City. Uh, but we'd be happy with any new space. Yeah. Is there room for expansion in the fire department? Uh, um, I don't know how that would look. So I think, interestingly enough, when the schools were re being redistricted, um, the fire department is sitting on leased land. 
and and so there was a, a select board and school board meeting on this, and and this is back when um, before Vince was there. I think the the plan was for the town to buy that two acre parcel. Okay. Is it is it owned by the school? It's still it's still owned by the school. What they ended up doing is they extended the lease. I believe it was probably a, like a fifty year lease with an option for another fifty or something like that. Um, so they extended the lease um, to the extent they could, and was happy with that. And I think that was maybe a little short sighted on all our parts. So could they expand on it? I think that's a discussion that has to happen now with the school. We share a lot of the same issues that the fire department shares. So they only have 2,900 residents. That might not seem a lot, but during the daytime, it goes way up there. We're dealing with car accidents and retail thefts and frauds and all this other stuff. And our call volume is equal to that of Montpelier, um, or our arrest volume anyway, um, which yeah, Montpelier is three times as much of the population as Berlin. So we're busy. Our officers are absolutely busy. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Um, overall town development and growth opportunities. Any board member want to speak to this? Okay. <laughs> um, the the growth in, in development in the in the town, as far as the opportunities go, I'm not the one to talk to it, really. Um, but what we're trying to do is make it so that we can get businesses in here that will help our grand list. In other words, try to hold your taxes down. Um, I think the DRB, the Planning Commission, they have all been trying their best. Um, they are doing a great job. The, uh, it's going to be hard to entice brick and mortar stores in like it, because of the internet. Um, the mall and their plans, and the town center plan, are looking at more small boutique style shops in the new buildings and then was on the second floor was going to be housing so that's the uh, if any of you have uh, not seen the, the the plan for the mall get a hold of tom or somebody on the planning commission and uh, they can help you out they'll go through it with you um not that i want to give them more work but uh, that is pretty much my take on the on the requirements as far as uh, the growth opportunities here in the town. Uh, most of the growth we're trying to keep up here on the, either on the Berry Mountain Road or up in the Plateau area. Um, there is, all right, there has been some talk, I don't, it's just rumor as far as I know that about uh, some large uh, housing developments going in, but we don't know for sure. And it, until they happen, we're just waiting. Any questions on this that I might be able to help you with? You got anything you want to add, Vince? No. Good. Yes, sir. I'm going back two decades. But when I first moved to the town of Berlin, it seemed to me that they um, they gave incentives for these people to come in, tax incentives. <coughs> and they said, well, no, at the end of like 10 years, they'd be paying full taxes, and the grand list would go down. Our taxes would go down when they started paying full taxes. <coughs> I don't think that ever happened. Well, <clears throat> one of the troubles with that is the grand list grew, but so didn't all the expenses. Um, look at it as it, uh, it helped keep your taxes from going worse than they did. Um, the economic, uh, not, uh, the, uh, tax abatement pro, uh, program is a five-year program. It's, it starts off that uh, they don't pay any taxes on their improvements the first year, but they still pay their property taxes. 
and then it's an incremental increase over the next four years to whether on the fifth year they're paying the, the, their full share. So it's not, it's, uh, it has worked some. Um, the requirements are quite strict. Uh, Coles, when they, they started building, <coughs> then they came to the town and refused them the, uh, the increments because they, one of the stipulations is they come to the town before construction starts. So Coles or the mall right from the get-go had to pay the full boat on that one. But uh, there's been, uh, there hasn't been that many that really have taken advantage of it. Um, the the uh, housing unit there by uh, Walmart, they did. And I don't know if, um, what was the name of the housing units going in? Foxfront. Foxfront. I don't know if they've come to the town yet for that or not, but we'll jump that bridge when they get there. Uh, any other questions on this? It seems to me that we're kind of almost sold the town. I mean, we're getting, you know, we're, instead of developing things that are going to increase our grand list, we're, we're increasing our liabilities greater than, than we're doing that. And so we've got a police department that's over, you know, doesn't have enough money. Fire department doesn't have enough money. The town doesn't have enough money. And we don't have the, we don't have the people to support it. It, it seems like we've got to start slowing down some of this uh, affordable uh, uh, housing development. Just, we just don't have enough. Sure. And I'm sure the schools are in just as bad position as we are. Well, fortunately, we're going to address that a little bit later on the program. Um, any other things on this? Okay. Um, uh, connection to CMB uh, Central Mountain Medical Center for the water system. So uh, the hospital, Central Mountain Medical Center, buys their water from the city of Montpelier. Um, they actually get a direct directly piped from the water treatment plant that's down on uh, North uh, Payne Turnpike North. They get it directly from that water treatment plant. Um, when we built a new water system for Berlin, we have, a, we have a water line that goes right down Fisher Road, right in front of the hospital, but the hospital is not connected to it. Um, they would be a great customer for us if we could. They use a lot of water, obviously. Uh, and, then, and so we've got into some very, very preliminary discussions with the hospital about buying their water from Berlin up rather than Montpelier. Um, we have had a consulting engineer look at our infrastructure to see if, it, if we can handle it. And it appears it could, but it's uh, be better to have some more infrastructure to, to make it work. Um, so those discussions are going to be ongoing for, for throughout the winter, I think, and uh, we'll have to see where we are, where we end up. Tom, I think you can probably add some more. Yeah, I, 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 I can. Thank you, Rob. So actually, the Central, Central Vermont Hospital approached the Public Work Board to, to uh, inquire if they could connect our system. It wasn't the other way around. The Public Works Board did not, did not solicit Central Vermont. And, and the reason they, uh, um, because they, they get water from Montpelier and they, in turn, you may or may not know this, but they pump it to a 300,000 gallon storage tank off of Industrial Avenue. And then that, from that storage tank, that pressure is what they use it in their facility. And because they do that, and they do some treatment in-house in for Giardia and things like that, they are classified by the state of Vaughan as a consecutive water system. And what that means is they are, they are just viewed as any public water system. So they have to have a water operator, they have to do all, all the testing, they have, to, they have to do all the reporting that we as the town of Berlin has to, or the city of Montpelier has, has to. So th there's a cost involved in, in that, a significant cost. Um, and now their 300,000 gallon storage tank is at its useful life. 
And so now they're contemplating a, a fairly substantial capital investment to, to add to that, that tank. And uh, so they, they approached us. Uh, Chief mentioned ISO before. When, when this water system was put in, in 2015, Berlin benefited by a half a point reduction in ISO. So everybody, everybody got a benefit from that water system being here. And, and uh, so the, 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 the hospital and the public work board agreed to do a study. It's jointly funded. And the, those results have just come out. And now, now we're to the point where rubber's meeting the road and discussions are being had. I'll, I'll take any questions. Without, um, without digging real deep, because the water systems up there are uh, complex, to say the least, um, the hydrants that serve the mall were on that system at one time. Right. And are, you, are they talking about doing away with that storage reservoir up right. there? Isn't so, the mall still over there? Is that related to that next topic in there, that, that 600,000 gallon? It is. Thank you. Okay. I'll come back when you get to that one. <laughs> so, I think we're there. So, Tom, so I have a question. So, when, when the, the hospital went to the mall here, my recollection, I was on the planning commission at the time, uh, or the DRB, I forget which, the city of Montpelier put in a 12 inch line from their water filtration system to the hospital. Which is what they required was a 12 inch line. So if that line extends up uh, to our system, do we then become a feed system to the city of Montpelier as well? No, that, 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 I'm sure. that city of Montpelier line would be redundant and be taken out of service. Appreciate that, but Vermont and the whole North 
counties have been in a four-year drought. So I, you know, it, it's it's easy to point to to a, to a well system. I really think it's more what's what's actually happening, you know, with, with our climate. So uh, uh, I, again, I, I don't think it's the, the well system. I think just we're in a dry spell. We'll likely come out of that dry spell. Yeah, I'm going to rely on the professional hydrogeologists. Yeah. Is there a report coming out? Did you see that? Yeah, we have a draft of it now. Yeah. And it has Otter Creek in there? Yes. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I, I, now the addition of the 600,000 gallon fire protection storage tank. Yeah, the, six, the 600,000 gallon storage tank would would be up on uh, up on the Dodge Farm. It'd be in addition to our 425,000 gallon tank. Um, it's actually off Scott Hill Road. Uh, now, the consulting engineer that worked with us on the hospital said that we we would be, and, and looking at our additional development with the town center and all that, we, they would recommend adding more storage up there. And so we would, uh, they, they said go with 600,000 600, uh, gallon storage tank. And it would provide the fire protection, additional fire protection, it would eliminate that current 300,000 gallon tank that the hospital has there in, up by Industrial Avenue. Um, so that would be the reason to have the 600,000 gallon tank is to, to be, uh, to service the, uh, the uh, development coming in with the town center and put us in a good position if the hospital should, should come out. Tom, I don't know if you have some. I think just for, for future growth of the, of the town. Yeah, just for future growth of the town. Is this a water system being designed to, in the future, be able to do sewer lines and sewer systems where the water lines aren't going to impact any, like, so people can get off of septic tanks and onto, like, a, a, a sewer system? Well, you're not water mixing. lines being designed so they aren't going to impact any future sewer work that would need to be done for these buildings. And do you, do you Josh, you mean where they're laid in the ground? Where they're laid in the thing? ground, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, the engineers would look at that and they, they know what projects are planned. And, um, and, and sewer lines and water lines can be engineered so that they can be close together or across over each other. Mm -hmm. I like to, yeah, I know like uh, sewers more go with uh, gravity, or Try to, as much as can be. As much as can be, yeah. And then uh, water is a little easier. To it's pressure, react. yeah. Yeah, it's pressure, so. Yeah. You don't have you know, to I was just curious if this has all been thought out for like say, you know, you want to run the water line, how you've done it down across town or in other areas. So these places now, it gives them the opportunity to build the sewer system as well. Well, water and sewer are different. Um, you know, just because we might provide water to an area doesn't mean that sewer is going to fall necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that answers your question. Or not. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, Chief. Well, so I'm looking at the, the 600,000 gallon fire protection storage tank, and we're talking about uh, possible uh, connection for the hospital and the future growth of Berlin. So we are using that as future growth and not necessarily adding to the fire protection. Is that fair to say? Not necessarily what again, Joe? Well, that would be the... We're, we're looking at the future growth of the town center and everything else. And then possibly if we if went into an agreement with the hospital, yeah. that's going to be taking a big chunk of that 
But this is storage, Joe. So, storage. so I mean, between these two tanks, you have a million gallons of storage for firefighting instantaneously, right? Okay. No one's using a million gallons instantaneously, right? Yeah, that's about five hours at our town regulated fire building. How long were we down in Barry City, that shed? Uh, yeah, we drafted out of the river. Right. And That's off right. Of we, both we of their we're on all the hydrants in Barry City <coughs> plus drafting out of a river. How, what is the? I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what, what is the uh, production <coughs> capacity or the production volume of the water of our, of our wells up there? Yeah. Uh, uh, how much can you produce an hour or a minute? Uh, Roughly. Almost 800 gallons in there. A minute. Yeah. Okay. So our fire flow by ISO requirements for the town of Berlin is 3,500 gallons a minute. Um, now, we don't use that, but that's the fire flow we have to meet. And honestly, ISO is pretty happy with our water system where we have hydrants, just so you know. So it's not a negative by any means, but um, I did the math while we were waiting. And if, given the new, given the, if you put the 600,000 gallon tank in, Assuming no input, which we'd have to take advantage of the input, but assuming no input, we're just under five hours at our um, Is that with standard fire flow? Yeah. The one tank or both tanks? That's with both tanks. Both tanks. But you do have input. You, you do have input, but uh, you know, taking into account if we had no input and you had full tanks and nobody else was drawing water on them, we're just under five hours of our fire. Which, so are, are you saying we're under your capacity now and we, I, we should desperately <laughs> build the 600,000 gallon tank? Oh, I would never turn down more water in the tank uh, or more hydrants on the road or anything like that. But I just, it is a, a concern going forward, especially with the new development that we mm -hmm. adequately stay ahead so of that. Would, would you agree that 600,000 would improve the system? Oh, sure. Okay, thank oh, yeah, yeah. you. Oh, yeah, No, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing at all. I love it. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, can we can we keep the old one too? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's what it is. It's keep the old one at, at six hundred. Yes, we're keeping both tanks. Okay, so we're keeping the one that's the CBH is currently. No, 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 no. no. That's both tanks saying. being the four hundred twenty-five thousand gotcha. tank that's already up there. And doing away with the one. CBH. And doing away with the one. Very hundred thousand. Yeah. More water and better. They're going to renovate it into the police department. <laughs> 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 or the fire department. <laughs> Anything else on the uh, 600,000 gallon tank? Uh, completion of the Scott Hill Road water loop? Yes, uh, the water loop. I, if you remember when I, when I introduced things, I, we have the water system up on uh, the Dodge Farm, and it comes down Airport Road. It crosses, uh, you know, south of the airport over to Airport Road, and then comes down Airport Road. Serves a few customers around the airport, and then down to Industrial Avenue and Granger Road, where it really starts to network with other pipes. But from the from Dodge Farm to that point, it's just one line that comes down. So if there's ever a repair needed there, or first, if you had to shut off the water for some reason, the rest of the system is shut down. Um, so, a loop. We we really need to have a loop for for the whole system, and since it's such a long run to get to get to where we got loops, so the loop would be coming down Scott Hill Road down to Berlin Corner. For, and connect into the water system there. So if you had a problem on Airport Road, you had to shut that off. You have this other loop that can continue to serve the community. Um, so that's that's one of our top priorities now. And it's not a, it, that's a long run from coming down Scott Hill Road. Tom, I don't remember the rough estimate right now, but dollar like wise or the water line, yeah, length or dollar dollars. What are you talking? About? Are you asking what is the length of the water line? No, the cost? there was a there was a cost. About four four point five million. Four point five million to put in that water line to to complete that loop. So we don't have you know it would be almost a disaster if we had to shut down uh, the line coming down Airport Road. So and, and 
what's the lake? Um, yeah, from the Dodge Farm Road Dodge there. Farm yeah, now it's, it's a mile and a half. A couple miles. A mile. Yeah. 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 What size line is that? Size. Coming down, coming down the airport, the current line? Yeah. I, you know, I'm not sure. It must be, Tom, do you know what size? Uh, 12 inch. Hmm? 12 inch. 12 inch, so yeah. 12 inch down so it would be another 12 inch coming down Scott. Yeah. And then that's with no caps or anything off. That's just bearing a line connecting from the water system mm -hmm. up at the tank. Yeah. And we had so a few customers if they wanted to connect coming down the yeah, grab on. Yeah. 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 So that's just the one. But that, that's all uh, separate cost to the uh, customer. That would be a separate cost to tap into that 12 inch line. Yeah. Or are they, they, they going to put we, like keys and shut offs down through at each property as they go putting that line in for the four point whatever? Uh, I, I, can only I don't think we have those details yet, Josh. Yeah. I can only speak to I can, God, I can only speak to the, the original line that there was a, a, a campaign to solicit customers. Yep. And if you signed up, there was no connection fee, and then they would put they would put something at the your tea, yeah, a shut off, a curb stop, right at curb stop at your house. Yep. But if you didn't sign up. You didn't, you didn't get it. And that, right. So if you wanted it in the future, you you would have to pay for that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, ma'am. So I think last week or maybe the week before, there was an issue with the line. It looked like it was at the at the intersection, maybe of yeah, Great, Great Jared Road. Industrial. Yep. Like, what is is that? Like what caused that is, is that you know is that part of what you're sounds like part of what you're talking about now. yeah there, there are loops there so yeah. nobody got i don't think anybody got shut off of the water but there was a repair that had to be done on granger road okay i saw um, the town guys working on the line popping the cap off there right at the end of shed road a couple of days ago does the town do the town guys work on the water line no, we have a third party. You have a third party for maintenance yeah. for that. Yeah, because I saw him popping like the cap off the shut off right yeah. there, or whatever. Maybe. I'm not sure what he was doing, John. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was just, yeah, that's they, they have a program of exercising the valves. Yep, yeah, sure. Yep, yep. That's probably it. okay. Yeah, I, I was just curious if it was, you know, aging infrastructure or or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I. Nobody has that answer. I, I doubt if it was aging infrastructure, but no. I hope not. No. <laughs> Anything else on the uh, Scott Hill loop? So uh, it gives people have the opportunity on Scott Hill to get the curb stops put in at no charge at this point. What's that? For, for, that, that, for that initial. Yeah, cost. yeah. We're we're away from doing any. Yeah. We so don't how have to they come up with a where we came up with a four point whatever a charge uh, if, if you know, you know, it's it's a rough estimate. It's yeah. not, you know. Right, because they have to if you know how long it is, usually price per foot, you can yeah. Yeah. kind of get a rough idea right. if there's ledge, if there's ledge or just yeah. 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 And next uh that seems like next item is additional uh water source well. Yeah, this is all related. <laughs> <laughs> this would be, uh, we need, we need to, we would have to get another, we'd drill another well if we were going to add another tank up there. Um, and, you know, we, it would be, you know, we'd go to our consultant again and they have, uh, they've identified some locations for, for that would be good lo locations for wells. Um, so do they know if it's the same aquifer that they're keeping on? Yeah. And you know, they're looking at fractures. Aquifer mm -hmm. might not be the right term. They're looking at fractures in the bedrock and stuff. I, I don't know how, what they, what they do. With, when we first had the wells, uh, the test well drilled and then the wells drilled, that was the best site that the engineers came up with. We had, I think it was a choice of three sites. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if there's more wells to be added, they may not necessarily be at the, at the site they're on now. They may be 
they'll have to take and do another survey of it. We wouldn't want it to be very far because you know you'd have to pump it to the tank. From an economic standpoint, the closer it is to that, so sure. the better. And those of us yeah. in the neighborhood hopefully would survive. However, that's a question. Uh, let's see here. Anything else on the additional source well? Uh, Connection of the Berlin Corners to the municipal wastewater system. Yeah, that's that's a project that we've looked at for a number of years. That would those familiar with the cross tent with Berlin Corner up there, it would be a gravity a gravity system that would would serve a residential area that would start from the corner or near the corner and go down Cross Town Road to about the location of Bosworth Road down. Down by the where the Across Berlin the pond. pond crosses the culvert there, um, and then it would require a pump station at that point and pump it back up Cross Town Road to a to a manhole, an existing manhole that's up there. Um, that that area is has got a lot of poor soil, and there, I know you know there there are poor soils, and um, there have been some failures of septic systems and it's hard to, to, to get anything new permitted for on-site septic in, in that area. So um, so we looked at that and, and Tom, will you just give an update on the status of that? Yeah. So uh, the public work board applied for uh, uh, an application from the state's clean water state revolving loan fund. And, and the, the uh, and what the what and it's uh, clean water SRF. What they their program is uh, you let's just say it's a hundred thousand dollars to do uh, the planning and final design of the system. This program then will uh, fund that, and then at the end of the end of the project, they will grant you fifty percent of the dollars. So so in effect, you're you are uh, in, you're out of pocket expenses, fifty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollar project, uh, and so the public's work board has used clean water SRF for, for several projects. And they're they're going to be coming up here and uh, talking about it. Uh, so, so they were they were very proactive during COVID. Um, there was always this <laughs> this thought that there was going to be some federal dollars available for projects that are shovel ready. And they're working, the public work board is working on a handful of these projects now to be able to get shovel ready. You know, a couple of our state reps here tonight, maybe they can talk more eloquently than I can about where that kind of funding is at. But um, so the, I, the, the plan or process is we want to get a handful of these projects ready to go. So if somebody says there's X amount of grant dollars to do this, we want to be on have the capability to do that. Any more questions on this? Uh, and then the construction of a Riverton community wastewater. Uh, yes, the community down in, in Riverton. This this. Uh, uh, this would be an on-site wastewater project, but it would include multiple multiple houses. So um, we've had we've had some test pits <coughs> down there. We've had an engineer look at the feasibility of it, and it looks it looks looks like it's feasible to uh, to uh, I forget the number of residents. Sixteen. Um, Sixteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. So, Sixteen. It could. So it would be like a mini, you, we could put in a collection system uh, for the residents, probably include a few manholes kind of thing, and to a pump station, and probably would have 
use a pump station to pump it to uh, the treatment area, which would be, you know, it's uh, fairly large. Uh, so that's just like a regular leach field, not a sewer plant. Not right, like right. Just in the ground, on site yep. treatment. Yep. yep. It's, it's your house septic system yep, on this steroids. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Just a yep. large system. And that's yep. under the same uh, clean water fund, right, Tom? That's Correct. kind of in the same boat with the Crosstown project. <clears throat> that project there, uh, if you if you were, how expandable is that going to be? There's going to be more than 15 residents down through there, or it's only 15 or 16 that are having trouble. So, I think the thought process, Brad, is that existing homes wouldn't connect to it because they have, but what it would allow, because the when the town went through new zoning three or four years ago, they allowed for higher residential density down there. That. Be, the lack of septic service would not allow that density now, but this project would allow potentially the construction of 15 or 16 new homes down in the Riverton area, or a, or a business, or a, you know, a, a restaurant, or something like that. Okay. Any other questions on this one? What are you saying? The people who are already there and have homes would not be allowed to connect to it? As long as I assume, as long as their sewer systems are functioning right, they fail every day. What's that? They fail every day. Well, yes, but I day. mean, the federal money, Rob, that's out there right now for this, that's out there for. Um, well, that's why we want to get these projects ready. Yeah. You know, ready in case. Um, dries up. Some of this COVID money suddenly becomes available for construction projects. Sure. They like shovel ready projects, you know, if there is such a thing. Yeah, sure. So if you have a design ready to go and uh, well, they've got money, you just, you, you put it up and then get a contract. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And, uh, the, biggest, the biggest piece of this puzzle was... They know that people own systems that are failing and getting help from the federal government. Mm -hmm. The biggest piece of this puzzle was finding a, a land mass down there that could support it. Mm -hmm. And so... Well, we were fortunate to find a, a local resident that had some some acreage down there. They were willing to partner with the town in, on doing this. And, uh, it's, and there was some question about expandability. It can be expanded if you find an additional uh, septic of, of land to allow this mm -hmm. leach field on it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still be like tanks that would have to be pulled down, like the, the right. would still have yes. to have yeah, yeah. tanks along yeah. the roof. It's just it's like your home system. Yeah. 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 No capability, no ability to pump that, like down. Not affordable to a rail line to the not, station. Not a, not an affordable. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else on the Riverton uh, wastewater system? Uh, construction of the Berlin Common Recreation Path. Nope. So, so uh, you may know that the, the, the town uh, received a. <coughs> it, it was all a, the project was forty thousand dollars to look at a recreation path around the new town center. We're just coming to the final th uh, throws of that. Uh, the, they, we had our alternatives meeting here a couple weeks ago. Uh, so at the end of the day, I guess it was with VTrans money, uh, at, at the end of the day, it's, it's going to uh, uh, list uh, uh, potential costs and things like that. It's, 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 a, it's a good bit of dollars to construct this. So really how the, the, the planning commission is, is viewing this is is in segments and and I, Bob Warnick's here. He can maybe talk better than I can. But but uh, so a, a project like this, once you get the, the initial concept done, now you have to do the engineering and design, right? And that's X amount of dollars. And and there are VTrans monies associated with that. So that likely that the, uh, the town through the planning mission would apply for for the, the grant funding for that. 
So that would then put the uh, uh, design, engineering design of this of this project together, and then uh, it likely then as to do construction, you'd have to look at doing it in segments to make it affordable, and then the planning commission would look for dollars to do uh, to do these segments, and a good bit of it hopefully could come from VTrans, but there are other. Uh, uh, recreational grants through the state uh, and federal uh, uh, governments that that promote recreation and so this is probably a multi-year project probably four or five years at, at, the, at the least at the minimum to, before we start doing any construction and stuff. but it's but uh, I know the rec committee and the planning commission are talking about a, an enhanced a bike and trail path throughout the town, and this is sort of a, a linchpin of that in, in the in the Berlin New Town Center there, where we hope there's going to be a population. Right, we're hoping for three to five hundred units of high housing down there um, that they could connect to this this trail network. So it's pretty exciting times, I, I think, for for the town. Any questions on the uh, the um, uh, recreation path for the common, Berlin yeah. Common? Earlier on, you were talking about the recreation path. You were talking about developing the land adjacent to it with affordable housing as well. Could you tell us about that? Right. What? I'm sorry, what's the question? The question was earlier this evening when you were talking about the rec cap when it was first mentioned, you said you were planning on affordable housing adjacent to the recreational path. Could you tell us about that? It, where that's going to be? It, you know where the, the, the senior housing project has been? Yeah, so the, place, yeah. so the Down Street um, has applied for the, from the town of Berlin for a zoning permit to build 30 units of workforce housing there. And that would be the first piece of it. Um, so it's right across the street from the senior housing. So those are single family or, or multi-family? Uh, some are single, years. some are multi. Yeah. There's 30 units there. Mm -hmm. How close are they to this recreational path that we're talking about? Um, a couple hundred feet. Right next door. Um, anything more on the rec path? Um, uh, construction of the Fisher Road diet study or completion? Bob? Um, yeah, the, the, the talk about the Fisher Road diet study. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, we're currently conducting a, um, uh, a road diet scoping study, uh, Fisher Road. Uh, this is somewhat in connection with the uh, uh, town center concept. Um, uh, what's a road diet? It's literally a diet. You're, you're losing lanes. Uh, the object is to improve safety, uh, make roads more pedestrian friendly, uh, make them more bicycle friendly. So we're conducting a scoping study. I say we, uh, we retain a consultant uh, to do that. Um, the agenda says we to we'll talk about alternative solutions, uh, but we're not there yet. In fact, uh, the timing is excellent here. On the 25th, uh, next week, they, we will be having an alternatives presentation meeting. Um, that is going to be available to everyone, uh, either in person or virtually, uh, using Zoom. Uh, and at that point in time, different alternatives that they're looking at will be presented to the, uh, uh, to the steering committee uh, and to the town discuss and, and, and look at. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, they've already, we know they've already looked at certain things, but we, we really haven't seen anything concrete. Uh, they've done uh, enough work to understand existing conditions. They've done some traffic modeling, um, but uh, we have not seen anything yet. So I'm excited to see what's going to come out on the 45th. Well, that's at the Central Mont Chamber of Commerce, uh, building at 6 p.m. Any questions about that? 
do you have an idea what the traffic flow is on the traffic count is on the Fisher Road? I do, but I can't tell you the number because I can't remember. <laughs> it's it's around twelve thousand, I believe. But it's 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 it's, it's considerable. Okay. Of course, there's a lot less when we close Fisher Road. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, we laugh, but you know, coming up with hard numbers yeah. that are current, we sort of have to work around a year. <laughs> Well, I mean, the only, reason I, the only reason I asked that, Bob, was because it, it, I think you need a point of reference uh, for people to understand the importance. If you're going to have a, a pedestrian presence and a, and a you know, bicycle presence on that road, why this study had to take place. Yeah, well, you, you've got places with four lanes and five lanes. Uh, a lot of pavement uh, and uh, not very pedestrian friendly. Right crossing that. Uh, so um, and that's that came up when we talked talk, started talking about connecting the hospital to their pro property on the other side of the road, connecting the mall uh, and then future development in that area to the hospital. Um, you know, so it, it became necessary, I think, to look at how can we do better. I encourage everybody to uh, if you're interested, uh, uh, join us uh, on uh, Tuesday. Um, procurement of land to establish a Berlin Park, Tony? Yeah. Um, uh, recently there was an application to the uh, Berlin Planning Commission uh, for a project that's coming to town and the, 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 the folks who are, who are, are working on that project are interested in possibly working with the town of Berlin to share some of that land, a uh, good chunk of the land actually, uh, for the possibility of the establishment of uh, a town park. Um, I know that it's a real goal for many of us uh, in Berlin to, to create more recreation areas um, for, for people to utilize. I'm trying to be a little bit careful about it, to be completely honest, but it's still um, in, in the, uh, the, the planning phase and, and uh, the public portion of, of what they're hoping to do on their portion of the land. So there's not a lot to share about it publicly. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Where's the land? I'm sorry. Yeah, where's it? I, I can't share that at the moment. All I can share, all I can share is that, is that there's a, a really amazing opportunity for the town of Berlin to uh, work with, with a, a partner um, to, to, to share a good chunk of land that can be used for the public. And that's, and for specifically for the purposes of establishing uh, a, a park and trail network, which will be really wonderful. Would that be, in, generally speaking, in the new town center? No. Okay. But in the town? <laughs> <laughs> We did add a, um, we did have another thought here. Um, Corinne, can you speak to the Historical Society? In general? In general, um, it's not really a town function, but it, it is important to the town. It is. Um, the Historical Society has, was established back in 1982. And we were, um, we were actually looking at, in the late 90s, putting an addition on the current town building. And instead of that, the town wanted to look at remodeling and putting an addition of their own. Um, that ran into some controversy. And so the Historical Society ended up paying $30,000 to have the space that they have there at the municipal building. Um, the pandemic kind of slowed things down as far as people's involvement. Um, we're trying to pick things back up. It's kind of hard. Um, we do have an exciting program that's going to be happening on November 12th. It's, uh, there'll be more information out about it. Um, but we try to put on several programs every year, have some meetings. There's a lot of great research going on. We absolutely welcome questions. Um, 
and are willing to assist with people researching. Uh, there's a lot of great um, research binders, a lot of files, a lot of uh, photographs, a few artifacts, a lot of great information. I have um, historical society cards if you're not sure um, if we might be able to help you. You also might have photos of old homes or stuff going on in the area that we would love to have a copy of or scan, um, some old documents. Anybody basically that is looking for information, we ask them to then share with us what they can because you never know when somebody else will be researching a similar thing. You know, it could be somebody's third cousin <laughs> that is also interested in some family history and we have connected up some family members which is, is kind of cool in itself. Um, we plan on having a display at the next town meeting, which we've done for the last several years. This year, a reminder that town meeting is actually going to be on the Saturday before town meeting, and then voting will be on town meeting day. Um, the voting will be at the town office, but the town meeting, I believe, will be at the school, as it has been in the past. Um, and so that's where we'll have a display. I don't know if there's any other public forums that are being planned where uh, they invited us at the last minute to have a display and it was too much at the last minute. But we always love sharing the uh, um, materials that we have with people. So I love to talk history anytime anybody wants to. <laughs> so <laughs> if you don't know how to get hold of me, come and get a card from me and I would be glad to either myself or Richard Turner or others are happy to meet you at the Historical Society. <laughs> it might be during the day, evening, weekend, whatever works for you. We'll try to make it work for somebody to be able to, to meet you there. There's a lot of research that can be done, you know, outside of actually meeting to, uh, to help people along in whatever project. And we would love to have more people get involved. We've got lots of projects that uh, you might consider helping us with. And we've been putting more information on the Newtown website. Um, if you go to community resources and then historical society, um, we're trying to get some more um, indexes and stuff to help people figure out what it is that, that we offer. So, be in touch. Anything for Corinne? Okay. Um, next is uh, proposed charter changes. Uh, Vince? So the town is proposing three charter changes that will be coming on the ballot this year. Um, we've had two public hearings um, and one revision notice on those. Um, I don't know, uh, Chair, do you want me to read the charter changes yeah, read off? Yeah, read the charter changes off so people okay. understand them. Okay, I can do that. I'm going to open a couple of documents here. So the, the uh, first charter change, it's the, uh, will be Article 1, it's the local options tax. And uh, based on that, and I won't read it as it's going to appear on the ballot, I'll just, I'll just state what they are. Um, it's for the town to impose a 1% sales tax, a 1% rooms tax, and a 1% meals and alcohol beverage tax. Um, and the tax under that authority uh, will be collected and administered by the Department of Taxes in the state in accordance with 24 VSA. Uh, revenues that uh, the town receives through that would be uh, designated for capital projects within the town. Do you want to have any discussion on that one? Uh, sir, that was where the, the people who come into town but don't own land in town get to help pay for services that we offer them. Um, it is, as it was, as it's been said, that uh, our population swells up to twelve thousand. A lot of those are workers. A lot of them are shoppers, and. This is just a way to have them help fund the plowing, the uh, infrastructure, everything else that we do to uh, 
encourage these businesses to be here for them. Um, any questions on this? We have a projection on revenue. It's roughly six hundred thousand. If if we uh, if we implement the the sales tax and the uh, the meals and alcohol tax, it'll be just a, a little bit over six hundred thousand dollars with those two. Is that and that's based on uh, twenty nineteen uh, tax numbers from the state. Yes. What are capital projects? I wouldn't be following if you have capital projects. Well, capital, uh, capital, uh, not projects necessarily, but capital uh, improvements, and that'd be equipment. Like snow. What's that? Yeah. Snowplows. Yeah, snowplows, and one of the things to give you an idea, the that was the greater. That was what. Two hundred and thirty something thousand. And that was just one piece of equipment. Right now, the, the payloader that's in the sand pit, that's getting toward the end of its life. Um, trucks we replace on a schedule. When they run out of their warranty, we replace them. Uh, you, in today's world, you really can't keep things much beyond the warranty because it costs so much to do any kind of repair. Um, the other projects would be paving, uh, road, road maintenance, uh, <coughs> anything like that. Doesn't that go to the fire department that's always struggling for money? Just like the town, they have to send a request for like a day, enjoy the same day, upgrade their ladder truck, and they find some new thing for a lot of that. Well, that, that's, that all leads into the town and the fire department coming together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Was there anything in there about, like, hotel rooms, like, at the hilltops that drop so much water that they can't get to the activity? Again, that would be a 1% be on the rooms and meals. Okay. Yes, sir. Does the surrounding towns have that tax? Yes. Barry Marcus? Yes. Yes. No. Barry just started it October 1st. Yeah. Many Barry. towns throughout Vermont have it now. At one time it was perceived in Williston, and now there's many towns on the list. And Vince has that list of the towns. Yeah. If anyone wants to call him about this, you can always reach out to him at any time, or any of us as well. How does that figure compared to other towns? Because it almost feels a little bit low. Maybe, I'm, maybe, maybe it's very low for other towns, but having so many car dealerships uh, and, and purchase use isn't covered. Those won't be covered. Okay. Yeah. And there's one other thing that we, to, to think about on this one. Um, um, you're better at than I am, Vince. The <coughs> state implementing it. There was last year. There was a um, some talk in the state legislature uh, regarding. Uh, local options tax in towns that may not have that uh, in effect at some point in time. Uh, there was talk about pooling that, the state implementing it, pooling those resources. So we would, since we don't have it now currently, if they were to enact that, the way that it read was that money, we'd be, we'd be paying that, that money would be pooled and then distributed um, by some formula that the state had. Um, around yeah. to all the towns. Mm -hmm. Or In if essence, you already have it implemented, like the other towns around us do now, um, it wouldn't impact us. And in essence, I see it as we're getting ahead of the curve. Yeah, that'll be good. Mm -hmm. Anything else on local options? Good. Okay, uh, Article 2 is elected to appointed clerk. Again, very simple. It would take uh, uh, removing the town clerk uh, as an elected position to an appointed position. Can I ask what the rationale for that is? I don't Several uh, people have asked um, about the appointment process. Uh, is I can only speak for myself on this one. Um, the way I looked at it was 
we really needed to take and put it before the voters and see what they wanted because the, the comments I was receiving was about 50-50. But the fact that you were getting some at all uh, meant to, to, to me that, they, that people were interested in, in at least looking at it. So that's what we're doing. It's still up to the voters to, to approve it or not. Yeah, but I don't understand what, why did it come up in the first place? I don't understand. I mean, it's always been an elected. I mean, a lot of towns, isn't it elected? Most towns are elected. East Montpelier is appointed. I think there's some, several others around us that are appointed now. And, and just what is the reason for switching over from elected, which is more of a traditional way? Like what it well, one of the things, yeah, one of the things that for me was when we appointed the chief, we appointed Vince. Um, the length of time it took to uh, to to look through the applicants with um, with a with an election, you're you're truly restricted to people in town. With appointment you can look a little further afield. And um, I know some people say that it gives the, the select board more power or more control. Um, it really doesn't because even as an appointed position, the town clerk is still separate from the town, from the, the offices of the, uh, uh, the select board. In other words, once they're appointed for whatever term, three years, then they are in for three years. There's no way to take them out of the office. They are still separate from the select board. And of course, Rachel is appointed. Um, we had to follow the state guidelines. She appointed an assistant. Um, the, the select board has no, had no control on that. It's uh, that the, the select board is looking for more control. I don't, my personal view, I don't see it. I just want to see a, a better choice of, uh, or a broader choice to, to pick from. So is it still the three terms? Is it still, so is it still three terms? Or is you appoint somebody and that person's appointed? For three years. Oh, it is still three, three yeah. years. Yeah, then at the end of three years, it's either reappoint or look somewhere else. Any other questions on this? Okay, the last one is Article 3, which is an additional addition of personal property and inventory taxation waiver. Um, basically, that is when the uh, total assessed value. This is business now. Personal property and inventory taxation is equal to or less than $1,650. The town treasurer may, after approval of the select board, waive that personal property inventory taxation. Because at, at, from the treasurer's point, it uh, probably costs us more to do the administration of that small amount of tax for the business um, than it does to just waive it at that point. So that's waiving in uh, just anybody who comes up to the six. No, this is business related. This is for businesses. Right. But business related. Correct. But it's not just, um, I think it says uh, that you may waive it. Yeah, I don't have the numbers of, of how many have actually the town did last year. Di Diane would have that off the top of her head. Um, but. but it's not that some people would be expected to pay it. And some wouldn't. Correct. Correct. Okay. And, and also, the what, what was the number? Twelve thousand. Twelve hundred. One thousand six hundred and fifty. If you you have to run that through the through the um, uh, I don't want to say the tax. Uh, you divide it by a hundred and multiply it by the the tax rate. So it's not. The one thousand dollars. It's actually the uh, hundred dollars on the tax rate is like twenty five, twenty five dollars or something. About that. Yeah. It's not. It, it, 
and for Diane, it's more of a nuisance to deal with it than to uh, just. It could be across the board. It's yeah. not like the way it's written. It kind of is like, well, we might. Or, yeah. You, we might not for, you know what I mean? No, I, <laughs> I, I understand what you're saying, but. I mean, it, it, it reads that way. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I mean. So you're just eliminating it. Yeah. Well, that level of it. And realistically, how many businesses um, have personal property they're using for their business? I mean, most of our commercial properties here in town are. Uh, box stores or uh, much larger concerns and personal property never really comes into it. It'll be for the, uh, you might get a mom and pop type of operation that would have this. I, I guess it was just my English yeah. grammar. Yeah. <laughs> we, we had, we, a little bit. <laughs> well, we did have some review on the uh, wording of some of the other uh, changes too. But. Okay, anything else on that? Uh, any concerns, comments? Getting down toward the end of the agenda. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so I'll we'll close the uh, floor discussion. Uh, board have or anyone want to have to? Round table. Good, thank you. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. And uh, as a first year select board member, this was extremely educational for me. And, uh, learning what everybody did and, and, uh, and what they do on their commissions. And it, it was really helpful for future decisions that we may be involved in making. So thanks for coming and sharing. Uh, and I had an idea to. Um, we're pretty cross-pollinated with our volunteers on some of these commissions and boards, I see. Um, it would be kind of a, a fun thing maybe for each board or commission to put together a one-sentence pitch and maybe have the town distribute on like front porch forum uh, a contact name and maybe a, a volunteer opportunity of the week to go out for each of these boards. Front, front porch forum seems to be really effective in getting neighbors. Uh, you know, I, I sent out a, a, a request for a hydraulic lift, and I got like 10 emails back <coughs> on recommendations. So it's really effective on connecting with the community. And maybe there are people out there that want to volunteer that just don't know there are these excellent fire truck driving opportunities <laughs> out there. <laughs> so uh, maybe that would be something that we could try as a town. Kind of all I have, but thank you for coming, everybody. I think that's a great idea, and I would also add to that that tonight's forum was just wonderful, and it's great that you're all here. So I concur with what Carl said, but maybe we could do some type of a forum like an elevator pitch regarding volunteering, and it's something the town could do, and we could do it at a venue like this and make it a fun, exciting event, you know, to encourage people to come in person as well as what Carl was suggesting. So just another thought. I would like to thank the Grange for the use of their building. Um, people in town, uh, you are, uh, if you need a, a venue, you just need to get a hold of the Grange uh, master and uh, have a chat with him. Uh, as I understand it, the building is, uh, as long as there's no other activities here, the building is uh, free for to the, for the town people to use. I would like to take in, uh, thank everyone for showing up. Uh, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. There's cookies and sodas in the back. <laughs>